In the history of France, arguably, there hasn't been a stronger personality than Napoleon Bonaparte. A military genius who shaped France's future as a superpower, Napoleon is known today for his ability to subdue kings and princes. He was a monarch, obsessed with rank, splendor, and his own dynasty. And yet, the man who raised eyebrows with concern all around Europe and the colonized world found the most trouble back at his own home. Napoleon's rebellious brothers and mischievous sisters made his nights restless. But the one who kept him up most of the night was his favorite sister, Pauline. The woman was beauty, charm, and magnetism personified. Men loved her, and to add to the woes of France's mightiest monarch, she loved them. Welcome to Nutty History, and today we're uncovering the filthy secrets of Napoleon's sister, Pauline Bonaparte. Out of his seven siblings, Napoleon did not adore anyone more than his dearest Pauline. In his eyes, she was the best living creature and the only one who never asked for anything. Unlike the rest of Napoleon's kin who positioned themselves on thrones all over Europe, Pauline had no desire for thrones or crowns. Instead, she chose to rule hearts, and surprisingly, that was enough to cause headaches for Napoleon. While today many celebrities like the Kardashians, the Jenners, the Paltrows, and even Jennifer Lopez have claimed to have power enough to break the internet, their charm and popularity may faint against the OG starlet that was Paula Maria Bonaparte Leclerc Borghese, better known as Pauline Bonaparte. The fashion trend center, life of late 18th century parties and balls, and known for sensational stunts and sheer dresses, Pauline may not have nearly conquered the world like her brother, but she definitely was the biggest celebrity of her time. Being scandalous and related to the world's most powerful leader of their time put Pauline in the crosshairs of many people who wanted to bring Napoleon down. They wanted to steal Pauline's secrets to use them against her brother, just like how cyber criminals want to steal your data and exploit it against you and your family. Every year, the number and the scope of data breaches worldwide are rising. According to the 2021 Annual Data Breach Report by Identity Theft Resource Center, there were 68% more breaches in 2021 than the year before. Your data is becoming vulnerable on the internet every day, and having your susceptible data removed from the internet is cumbersome and a nearly impossible task that can take years to be done, unless you have Incogni. With three simple steps, Incogni can protect you from all sorts of cyber threats that can exploit your data by having it erased. Graciously, Incogni has provided Nutty History with an awesome offer to protect your history. A massive discount of 60% for the first 100 people who will sign up for their service by using the link in the description below. Once again, thanks for sponsoring this video, Incogni. According to the French general Louis Stanislaw de Girida, no woman in the world had savored the pleasure of being beautiful like Pauline. But Pauline wasn't very conservative about her beauty. Rather, she was generous, too generous for the reputation of her brother. The boldness of her love affairs and bedroom exploits had shocked the continent and her affinity for her dear brother Napoleon had given Napoleon's opponents fodder for the rumor. And yet, her biggest scandal was not related to her penchant for adultery or the gossip about the questionable nature of her relationship with her brother, but a statue. The story of this sculpture begins with Camilo Borghese, an Italian nobleman who happened to become Pauline's second husband, and that happened in August of 1803, only eight months after the death of her first husband. Now, this marriage was against Napoleon's wishes. He wanted Pauline to wait longer after mourning the death of her previous husband. However, Prince Borghese was a big deal in European society. He was one of the richest men in Italy and was famous for his world's finest diamond collection and his splendid residence, Villa Borghese. It was a real West Kardashian marriage of the 19th century. Through this high-profile marriage, Pauline added 70,000 francs to her income per year, and her wealth saw the addition of part ownership to the lavish Villa Borghese and two well-stuffed carriages with riches among the rest of the merchandise. But as they say, all the riches in the world cannot buy you happiness. This was true in the case of Pauline, who truly sought happiness and more bodily pleasures. Within a few months of the marriage, Pauline became disillusioned with her new husband. According to the hotbed of rumors, the prince perhaps preferred men, plus he simply wasn't endowed enough to satisfy the insatiable sister of Napoleon Bonaparte. Whatever the reason may be behind the marriage turning sour, Pauline chose to stay married to the Italian prince because of two reasons. 
Being the wife of Camilo Borghese brought her a title, and her husband had the immense wealth to satisfy her other urges, such as her love for extravagant jewelry and her passion for the arts. There was also the matter of Pauline's stubborn attitude. Francesco Melzi de Rio, Duke of Lodi and Vice President of the Napoleonic Republic of Italy, was being considered by Napoleon as a possible candidate for his sister's second husband. However, the Duke had heard of Pauline's exploits and wasn't even remotely interested in taking an infamously promiscuous woman as his wife, even if she was the sister of the Emperor. This is when Camilo Borghese, the sixth prince of Somona, came into the picture. It is believed the betrothal was proposed by Napoleon's brothers, Joseph and Lucien, and under their pressure, Pauline married the prince, without Napoleon's knowledge. Now, when Napoleon learned of this transgression by his adored sister, he was livid enough to refuse to acknowledge his sister's new title. The marriage was further troubled by her difficulty to adapt to the city of Rome and Roman society. It didn't take her long to revert to her salacious ways of seducing men behind her husband's back. Romans were ridiculing her, and soon the word reached Napoleon, who wrote her a tough letter to remind her who she is. But Pauline was stubborn through and through, and though once she had fallen for the prince's charming Mediterranean looks, after the disillusionment she always addressed him with a jibe. Her favorite address for him was his serene idiot. But did the letter from Napoleon work? No, it did not. Before Pauline left for Rome for good to return to France, she decided to commission two statues of herself from the famed sculptor Antonio Canova. Camilo Borghese requested Canova to portray his wife in the likeness of a Roman goddess in the old Roman tradition of depicting powerful mortals in the role of deities in art. What Borghese had in mind was something eloquent as Diana, the chaste goddess of the hunt. Diana is the Roman equivalent of Artemis, also known as the virgin goddess for her vow to celibacy. When Pauline heard of this proposal, she shook her head and dismissed this incongruous idea, laughing. She commented that no sane mind would believe she was a virgin. Say what you want, but Pauline was a self-aware and humorous woman who apparently kept it 100. Instead, when Pauline met Canova, she shed all her clothes and told the sculpture artist to cast her as Venus, the goddess of love, the Roman equivalent of Aphrodite. On the question of why Pauline asked for a bare sculpture of her, she responded that the room was too hot for her to keep her clothes on. While some may argue this was the peak of Pauline's innate vanity, Flora Frazier, author of Pauline Bonaparte, Venus of Empire, believes that Pauline was trying to flaunt her disregard for convention and her revelry against the idea of traditions. As soon as the statues caught the eye of the public, a furor of gossip among the masses was expected. It was a notorious act pulled by Pauline for a woman of her station. Yet, among her peers, the sculpture's technical virtuosity won widespread admiration. Canova recommended that the sculpture was best viewed with a torchlight, which gave the sculpture an illusion to make marble seem more human-like. Today, Pauline's form continues to amaze visitors to the Galleria Borghese in Rome. However, back in the day, Borghese was not a fan of the naked sculpture of his wife. On delivery, the infuriated Borghese stashed the piece of art in an attic, and the difficult marriage came to an end soon after, with Pauline leaving for Paris. Born on October 20, 1780, in Azaccio, Corsica, Pauline was the sixth child of Carlo Buenaparte and his wife Letizia, a reasonably wealthy noble family. Despite that, Pauline's childhood was not all hearts and roses. Carlo, her father, passed away when she was only five, and the family's fortunes withered away, plunging the Bonaparte house into poverty. Pauline's oldest brother, Joseph, became the head of the family after the death of their father but it was the maverick Napoleon who turned things around for the Bonaparte family and got them back their seat among the elites of Paris. Pauline, meanwhile, got no formal education and showed no signs of interest in academia, intellect, or politics like her siblings. She was a spoiled brat of the house who soon established her reputation as mischievous and impulsive. Instead of playing the Game of Thrones, she preferred to go on amorous escapades. Adult Pauline took special pride in her looks, her outfits, and her skill of flirting. It is said that her large eyes were expressive and appealing and had swooned Napoleon's entire war cabinet. Many of Napoleon's young officers ended up in her bedroom. To curb her decadent enthusiasm, Napoleon came up with a solution in the form of Charles Leclerc, but that's the version Napoleon would like you to believe. In 1797, Charles Leclerc was a general in Napoleon's army and madly in love with Pauline. When Pauline came of age for her time, she was in fact in love with Stanislaw Ferron. 
Louis Marie Stanislaw Ferron was a French politician, a journalist, a representative to the National Assembly, and a representative on a mission during the French Revolution. The dude was also 40 years old and known for his philandering antiques. As soon as Napoleon heard of it, he and his brothers nipped the affair in the bud. A few days later, Napoleon caught Pauline with Charles Leclerc in a rather embarrassing position behind a screen in Leclerc's office. Napoleon found Leclerc a much better choice than middle-aged crisis-ridden Ferron. Not only because Leclerc was only 24 and closer to Pauline in age, but also because Leclerc was a huge Napoleon fanboy. He would dress up like Napoleon and would also imitate his walk. The couple soon had a son after marriage, Dermide. Once Leclerc left to serve in Western France, Pauline found new freedom in Paris. With her husband gone and her brothers and mother having zero authority over her, she became the star socialite of the Parisian high society. With most of Paris dancing on her fingertips, she tested her powers of seduction to their limits. One of her most scandalous affairs involved dating three of her brother's generals at the same time, Moreau, McDonnell, and Bernouville. It's extra impressive to know that the three gentlemen were close friends and the three-sided affair came to an end because they ended up talking to each other. In 1801, Napoleon asked Leclerc to quell the brewing rebellion in Saint-Domingue, now known as Haiti, and asked Pauline to accompany him. The princess was not happy at all, but a year later she stomped her feet to Haiti, leaving behind a string of lovers and a luxurious Parisian life. To punish her brother for this forced journey, she decided to go on a shopping spree, purchasing everything with her brother's money. While Leclerc was dealing with the rebellious Toussaint Le Overture, the French had to carry Pauline from the ship to Haiti. But once Pauline got there, she was surprised to learn that the society was not as provincial as she had first thought. With no oversight from Napoleon and Leclerc busy with his military campaign, Pauline made Saint-Domingue her own little haven. Lavish parties, extraordinary balls, flirting, and feeling up every young French soldier she could find. Pauline turned Saint-Domingue into extravagant sets from the movie Babylon. As much as these events do not paint a bright picture of Pauline, she was, in fact, truly in love with Leclerc. After a short stint of success, Leclerc's army was hit by an outbreak of yellow fever that caused the decimation of the French troops. Pauline used her entertainment to lift the morale of soldiers, and as yellow fever raged on, she turned the family mansion into a field hospital and took the helm as a nurse. When Leclerc also got infected with the drastic disease, he urged Pauline to return to Paris and save herself. But Pauline didn't want to leave her dying husband alone, even though she had no reason to stay in Paris prior to traveling to Saint-Domingue. In November 1802, Leclerc died from yellow fever, and only then grief struck Pauline and her son returned to France. She also cut her hair and placed them with her husband in his coffin on his burial. For all the time she locked horns with her brother, Pauline remained fiercely loyal to Napoleon. Though Napoleon always showered her with gifts, she didn't care for them much. He bestowed her with the Duchy of Guantala, and she sold it to Parma for 6 million francs. When Napoleon fell from power, she liquidated all of her assets, including her house, and moved to Elba to be with her brother in exile. None of his other siblings ever visited him there. She also supported Napoleon's attempt to return to France and regain power, and gave him Borghese diamonds to accomplish that. After Napoleon's eventual fall at Waterloo, she moved back to Rome to be in the protection of Pope Pius VII, but didn't stop trying to get to St. Helena to be with her brother again. The nature of their relationship was always questioned by Napoleon's rivals, and later certain historians accused them to be more than siblings. According to Linda Rodriguez McRobbie, Napoleon's second wife Josephine claimed that she caught the two siblings, and another courtier of Napoleon's court asserted that Pauline confessed to them about her desires for Napoleon. But there's no damning evidence to prove that Napoleon and Pauline were anything more than siblings. There's also the matter of how Pauline and Josephine didn't get along at all. Pauline was a contradictory personality. In some ways, she was way ahead of her time. And in others, she was an awful byproduct of a troubled period of history. She treated her servants as less than humans, but also was always the first to offer charities and participate in social welfare. She ordered holes to be dug in people's ceilings when visiting them so she can bathe in milk and honey and demanded to be carried wherever she went like an ancient queen. And then there was the matter of her amorous adventures. From generals to soldiers to actors, Pauline had lovers of every gender and race. Famous violinist Niccolo Paganini, Philippe Auguste de Forbin, Colonel Armand Jules Canoville, Felix Blangini, and the leading actor of the day, Francois Talma, were a few of her rumored lovers. 
It is believed that Pauline likely suffered from salpingitis, an infection of the fallopian tubes that amped her drive for intimacy to 11. The infection caused her significant pain and led to her death at the premature age of 44, three months after she reconciled with Prince Borghese. The cause of her death was pulmonary tuberculosis. Even in her death, she was smiling for she believed she was dying a beautiful woman. Hope you enjoyed this forgotten nutty chapter of history. Do not forget to like and subscribe and tell us in the comments who we should cover next. And as always, thanks for watching Nutty History.